Let's move on to your research because there's some lovely stories that come out of that. So tell us a little bit about it. So 40,000 pull requests over a two year period. How did you, what did you test and what did you find? Yeah, so 40,000 pull requests and counting. counting. Um, so in a sense, it's um, the, the, the study started as a very lightweight one. So again, me coming from the XP background, I had a bit of a, um, interest in getting to understand the teams that they help out with. Um, and usually those teams are the ones that, that are working in a way where, you know, the typical way of working of developers, I, I think the majority of teams are working that way. Um, which is to, you know, work in isolation. I don't call it any more individual work. I call it work in isolation because I think I yeah. think it is a bit more about what it means because it means also yeah. feedback is as a des by design delay. Yeah. Um, and then after I'm done with my work in isolation, I raise a pull request and I throw it over the wall to my colleague to get to understand the changes that they made and, you know, and get some uh, an, abil an ability. It's a mechanism. I think at least some teams have it as a mechanism to build a human judgment as part of building quality, right? Yeah. And and then you know the other person is busy. Uh, they have their own PR. They have other PRs to review, um, other meetings, everything else that competes for their, their time. And and this is the the the, the way of working that they call async code reviews, right? Which means that um the the review is done async right and um and this is the majority of teams that 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 they get to see the way that they work and i tend to also um try to mentor and coach and help these teams discover some other ways of working and with a couple of teams at one point i was really interested to do because there's there's a certain share of engineers and engineering managers that would like to try out some other ways of working but they didn't really know how that world looks like in terms of yeah. some kind of data informed way right and and so i said okay let's let me just you know peek into this process uh find some things that i would be interested to uh, to get to see and um the things that that i was interested to see was the amount of the engagement that i get to see on the prs because i think there are some systemic effects of, of these delays that happen right and i was really curious how does that affect engagement on the pr so that was one di dimension um, the other one was uh, the wait time so how long do we take um, to to review the the yeah. prs and the third thing was the size of the prs and how does how do how does the size of the pr factor into this discussion as well so there were some really um so there were some conclusions that they get that they got out of analyzing all of these pull requests and the things that they talk about on the conference are the the conclusions are the ones that were systemic meaning they showed up in every data um set that they analyzed for the teams that were doing async code reviews and there were some kind of intuitive insights that they got or something that they already know that, that was there kind of um um like a shared crowd understanding implicit one but they got to see it in the numbers uh and but there were also some really surprising things some learnings that they got to also discover um and the intuitive part was this engagement that you know the um as we as we increase the size of the pull request the engagement tends to drop exponentially uh down uh yeah. per size of the pull request right so the more the code you have the less the less feedback Per size you get to see, right? So I'm not talking anything about yeah. the quality feedback, etc. Right? Yeah. I'm just saying the, that 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 they get to see less less um, less motivation to to yeah. comment to, to say, right? To, to to quote to quote you back to yourself, there was a line that you said that I really liked, which is, was ten lines of code equals ten issues. Five hundred lines of code means looks good to me. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, I think I found it on Twitter at one point, but uh, yeah. I think this is this uh, anecdotal evidence, so to say, that that all of us share, right? And and yeah. one of the things that that is kind of interesting was that most most people know about it, right? Don't make huge pull requests, right? And that's fine. That's that's a, that's a good advice. That's starting advice. But then on the other side, what they got to discover was that when it comes to the wait time, the wait time. Um, the wait time is is important 
to be measured in relation to how much time did they invest to create these pull requests, right? I can brag about one hour review time, but if it took me 10 minutes to create this pull request, mm -hmm. then the weight to processing time ratio is six to one, mm -hmm. right? So if, and if, and we were making small pull requests and everyone is happy about it, right? We think we're doing a good, good thing, but then when you scale this out on, a dozen or hundred of pull requests inside of the team, and then you multiply that by the number of teams, you get to understand how much wait time you get to introduce by reducing the size of the pull request if you work in an async manner. And that was a surprising thing for me because I usually I just thought, okay, this smaller pull request, right? But then on the other, other side, I saw that there's a really huge hit on the wait times, which also affected the throughput of the of the teams because the, they needed more time now to deliver the same. Um, chunk of of code, right? And yeah. it's not. I mean, yes, we get to see more engagement, and because of that, we have more chances to build in the quality. But then, the the thing is this trade off that you have to make. Do I, you know, uh, if I make smaller pull request, I get to lose the throughput because I need to wait disproportionately longer time for the review, or I go the other way around and I create invest one week of effort and. I, I wait for the review for a couple of days. I get LGTM, someone just stamps plus one without even reviewing it and yeah. hope that, that this thing is not going to crash in production, which you know we know that doesn't happen as, um, as seldom, so to say. And uh, so this trade-off was really interesting. And, and that's where this idea of reducing the transaction cost from lean came into my mind because I saw this thing of, of a review as a transaction cost, which is... How do you the cost of tra transferring a batch from one stage to the, another, meaning from development to review, and how can we reduce this transaction cost? And this is what the th th production system and lean, in a sense, is all about: finding ways to reduce the production, um, the transaction cost, in order to be able to keep the size of batch small and not yeah. lose the throughput. So, yeah. and then as we as I start looking into more and more data, this idea of continuous code reviewer reducing the time to react, so to say, for a review, because again, it needs to be evaluated in relation to the amount of effort that we have invested came to as, as a connection point, right? And then if you think about it, just a thought experiment, if you start reducing the size of the pull request and you have to react sooner in order not to lose the throughput, then you have to um, have higher availability, meaning you have to be more reactive to that in order to bid. To yes that you have to have more time so when you push it to the extreme you get to a point where actually the the optimal you can get to optimal size batch size or pr size of even one line of code that is reviewed as it's being typed which yeah. translates into what we get as a byproduct of working together because i have guaranteed availability of a reviewer someone sitting next to me which means that the cost of review transaction cost is driven to zero so that's kind of the, the the conclusion of the study is if you want to reduce the size of the pull request, which you should do, but you don't want to lose the throughput, you, the people in the process, authors and reviewers have to get closer and closer in time uh, in order to be able to achieve that. And if you push this yeah. to the end, you get to a co-creation patterns or bare more programming where you get and this. And the, 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 thing that, the thing that I loved about your, your findings and your exploration and your way of presenting them was that it was not only data driven but that conclusion is, is, is kind of mathematical it's kind of it's kind of obvious from the graphs that you draw that that that, that you know that's the answer you you reduce the you, you reduce the cost of the transactions and that's going to reduce you know reduce the de delay time and 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 the maximum that you can do that is to reduce it to zero so it, it it's kind of a, a clear argument this clip was taken from my podcast the engineering room with Dave Farley a monthly podcast with some of the brightest minds in software engineering. You can find full episodes on all your favorite podcast platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Amazon Music. Your support helps us to bring the, you these regular episodes, so please leave your positive review on your preferred podcast platform to help us to continue to grow and bring you great guests and their insights. Thank you very much for listening.